Resident Evil 4. You know, I've gotten a lot of toys in my life, but I have to admit, one of the more unique ones has definitely been the Oculus Quest 2. Now, ever since my wife got this for me last year, I've played some pretty cool games, from Vader VR to Thrill of the Fight, and of course, Jurassic World Aftermath. But I've always felt that this technology could be used for something more, you know? I remember seeing an ad recently for a game called Path of the Warrior, which looked like a first-person version of Streets of Rage, and I was thinking, man, that's what this VR system needs more of. Then came the announcement of Resident Evil 4 VR for the Oculus Quest 2. Convenient. Now, at this point, it is cliche, but it is true. If you have a game system, any system, you have a copy of Resident Evil 4 on it. This is one of the most ported games out there. I mean, think about it. It started out on the GameCube, then PlayStation 2, PC, Wii, iOS, Zebo, whatever the hell that is, PS3, Xbox 360, Android, PS4, Xbox One, Switch. The Wrist Game! Now, it all started in 1999 when the creative forces down at Capcom wanted to make a totally new and totally different type of Resident Evil game, which focused more on cool, stylish action with people with superhero abilities. And so we got... Let's rock, baby. That's too different. But you're thinking, I like that. The idea was decided to be too far removed from the survivor horror roots of the series, but they used it to create one of the greatest action franchises of all time. Now, Resident Evil 4 actually would go on to have a pretty long development process, which saw several versions before finally settling in on the one that would become the product we know of today. Resident Evil 4 would still take more of a focus on action than in previous entries, which was controversial at the time. But at the end of the day, you can't argue with success, as this would become one of the most influential games of the 21st century. Man, during that time, Capcom made Devil May Cry, which revolutionized action games, and Resident Evil 4, which did the same for third-person shooters. Man, they were on fire back in the day. Resident Evil 4 placed more focus on reflexes and shoot 'em up gameplay, which appealed to a more wider audience. And this focus would continue with later games such as Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6, Revelations, and so forth, and admittedly with mixed results. Now recently the series has returned to more horror base with 7 and Village, which happened to be in first person. That coincided with recent remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. And thus, we get Resident Evil 4 for the Oculus 2. Now before I say anything else, I think I should just come out and be very honest about my experience with Resident Evil 4. While I have played the game in the past, I admit, before now, I've never beaten the game itself. That, I don't know, when it comes to Resident Evil, I've been more of a Chris, Jill, Wesker guy than a Leon, Claire, and Ada person. But, it's all good, it's all Resident Evil. And you know what? It kind of worked out, because this gave me a very, very unique way of finally fully experiencing Resident Evil 4. And I'm glad to share it with you. The story of Resident Evil 4, for those who don't know, revolves around arguably the series' most popular protagonist, Leon S. Kennedy, and his awesome hairstyle. I mean, why do you think he stars in all those CGI movies? After surviving the events of Raccoon City on his first day as a cop, Leon has become a pretty big deal. Now he's a United States government agent, and he's sent on a mission to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley, who's being held in a rural village in Spain. Upon arrival, he's greeted by hostile villagers who have been infected by parasites known as Los Plagas. Eventually, Leon is captured by Los Illuminados and becomes infected himself. Soon, he escapes, meets a former researcher named Luis, who doesn't last too long, finds Ashley and meets Sadler, the leader of the cult, who wishes to use Ashley as a carrier to infect the president and begin the conquering of the world. When you think of Resident Evil stories, it's easy to think of 4 because it has everything that pretty much defines what the series has become. 
secret organizations, weird zombie creating infections, over-the-top bad guys, and super cool action heroes. Its narrative manages to walk that tightrope between horror and cheeky action fun. It helps that all the characters are, for the most part, pretty engaging and charismatic. Although, Ashley can get a little annoying at times. I'm coming, I'm coming. Now, I do feel that this story does tend to drag on a little bit, especially when we get to the island portion of the game. That's when the game pretty much starts throwing you into one boss fight after another. But despite that, Resident Evil 4's story is still good old-fashioned gothic horror amusement. And it sets the template for more wackier tales to come. Like I said before with the graphics, they weren't updated for a more modern look as in Resident Evil 2 Remake, but I think that's in this game's favor, because it really does feel like you're placed inside that old GameCube or PS2. For its time, this was a great looking game, and you know what? It still is to this day. The dark atmosphere is so detailed and immersive, it just truly is a testament to the outstanding job that they did in the game design. Cutscenes are also shown on a screen like you're watching a movie. Now we come to the real fun part. This game literally puts you right inside Resident Evil 4. While the graphics are not updated to a more modern look, you instead feel like you're walking around an old PS2 game, complete with flat bushes. It's kind of hard for me to explain, and this footage really doesn't do it justice, but playing this game really felt more like an experience above anything else. Armature did a masterful job in taking this old title and remapping it into a true VR experience. The game gives you several options to play. This is done to accommodate those who may suffer from motion sickness. Thankfully, I do not have those issues, so I was able to use the full motion function. Just wandering around this dark atmosphere, from the village in a rainstorm, to the castle, underground tombs, a World War II style bunker, and so on and so forth, is just so damn engrossing. This game really kept me on edge, which is even more so when you live with cats who like to feel up on your legs while you're playing. But when the zombies attack, that is when things really get kicked up a notch. There's a lot of customization this game allows, but I'll just explain the way I played it. Since I am right-handed, I had my hand pistol on my right leg. I could reach for it and load my clips, which are on my left holster. Two-handed hand weapons like shotguns, rifles, and rocket launchers are on my right shoulder. Healing items like first aid sprays, herbs, and eggs were on my left shoulder, while my trusty knife was on my left leg and grenades were located on my chest. <sighs> This really made me feel like I was actually wheeling these weapons, and that I could feel that rush when a horde of bad guys were stalking me down while I was desperately trying to switch back and forth between weapons and frantically trying to reload my bullets. I will say this, it did feel a bit frustrating when I would reach for some ammo and instead get my knife, but that's just one little thing. But one big question is how would this game handle Leon's close quarters combat, such as the spin kick and suplex? Well, when you have a zombie stunned, you can walk up to it, press the action button when it appears, and the game will then go into a temporary third person mode, which you will see Leon execute his maneuver. Also, when he gets grabbed, you can escape by shaking the Oculus remotes fast enough. Well, most of the time. That also leads to another Resident Evil 4 mainstay, the QTEs. Oh, they're still here, and you have to complete a maneuver as quickly as you can to keep from taking damage. When you reach Ashley, you have to execute the same escort missions as you did in the original game. You can command her to follow you around, stay put, or heal her when she takes damage. And damage she will take, especially when she gets scared. This can leave you in a tough spot when she's being attacked by enemies that can tank a great deal of damage. Remember, she's the most precious cargo, and if she dies, it's game over. Also, be careful not to spin around too fast, because she has a tendency to be too close to you and- Jeez, woman! You back up, please! Or you're gonna catch the butt of my gun to your head! I know you're scared, woman, but remember, six feet, please, six feet! Oh, you think that's hair-raising? Try playing as Ashley. There's a section where you have to be the president's daughter, and you have to outmaneuver enemies with your speed and wit, as well as solve puzzles in order to get back to Leon. Funny thing is, I found this to be the scariest part of the game because I have no weapons. While Leon does run into some tense scenarios, at least he's armed to the teeth with his guns and ammo that he can find around. It's for that reason I still find Jurassic World Aftermath to be scarier, because in that game, you're just playing as a normal guy and you really don't have any offensive weapons that you can use. So in that game, you must rely on setting traps and running away as fast as you can. Now, in fairness, 
In Resident Evil 4, there can be times when your ammo starts to get sparse, especially towards the back end, but you never really feel completely defenseless. Also appearing in this game is everyone's favorite merchant. I love this guy. Yo, you wanna buy some toothbrushes, man? This is some real fly personal hygiene equipment I got here, man. And I got a hell of a hair dry over here too, check it out. The gameplay here really carries this VR experience. Instead of just playing Resident Evil 4, you feel like you're living it. I can't really tell you any noticeable music tracks from Resident Evil 4, except for the typewriter where you save your game because I heard it all the time. But the music when it's played in this game is used effectively, especially when it alerts you to the fact that you're in an area with a dangerous foe. Also used well in this game are the sound effects. One thing that really got me going was the chants from the enemies. They come right in loud and clear and kept me right on high alert. Even small things like the loading of my guns, I don't know, it just had a very strong positive effect on the whole thing, you know? Good stuff to the ears, and well used. So now it's time for the final call. Is this a buy or a sell? Places you right in the middle of Resident Evil 4. Fun, fast-paced third-person action converted successfully into first-person. A story that drags on a bit, and Ashley is still an acquired taste. Now, just for some more information, this version of Resident Evil 4 is still missing some classic modes, unfortunately. There is no assignment Ada, mercenaries, or separate ways that unlock when you beat the game. You can get alternate costumes and access to more powerful weapons on your second run, but that's about it. Now, those modes could always be added in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. Resident Evil 4 for the Oculus 2 was one heck of a good time. I gave my wife plenty of laughs as I tried to take down enemies of bad guys that were coming at me. For those of you who have a headset, this game is definitely worth purchasing. And if you don't, then I say this game is worth getting one for. It's funny how Will and George recently did a review of Dead Rising, another popular Capcom game. I think Dead Rising would be a great candidate for the VR format. Hell, let's not stop there. Why not Mega Man, or Onimusha, or hell, even Street Fighter? I mean, why not? I brought up Jurassic World earlier during this review, so how about bringing Dino Crisis to the Oculus? With the recent announcement of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas making its way to the Oculus 2, I kind of feel like the possibilities are endless. Maybe this will give us a new way of experiencing classic video games. Count me in. I am Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, please visit our TBOG store for cool merchandise. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep on gaming.